This is AP Precalculus Notes for topics 3.4 to 3.5, sine and cosine function graphs and sinusoidal functions. So up till now, we've been playing with the unit circle where we know what all of these different radian uh, angle measures are, and we know if we take sine or cosine of those values, we know what their x and y coordinates are using the Pythagorean theorem and a bunch of other memorization tools. So now we're going to be plotting all of these uh, numbers, the x and y coordinates, onto a graph where we get some sort of sine wavy type shape. So in order to show you how those are generated, I'm going to be making a table. Um, and that's just a general tip. Whenever we get to things that we don't understand, make a table and look for patterns and shortcuts. So here we go. Um, I'm noticing that on this table, I'm missing zero. So I'm gonna add zero over here to the left. And I'm gonna say, okay, what is sine of zero? And because we have our trig values of special angles memorized, we know, okay, sine of zero is zero. You can come down here and say zero. Sine of pi over six, by the way, sine is all the y-coordinates, right? So sine is all the, here, let me write this down. Sine is the y-coordinates. So I'm, I'm really looking at the, the pi over six is gonna turn into one half, and pi over three is gonna be root three over two. All the y-coordinates here, just fill them in. So what is sine of pi over six? Hopefully you said, oh yeah, it's one half. Sine of pi over three, oh yeah, square root of three over two. What is the square root of three over two? I think square root of three over two is like something like 0 0.866-ish, I think, uh, somewhere around there. Um, pi over two goes all the way up to a height of one, and then it's kind of uh, symmetrical, right? So then I have, uh, what's the y coordinate of two pi over three? And you say, oh, well, two pi over three goes back down to the square root of three over two, just like it used to be. And then you can use the axis of symmetry, square root of three over two, and it goes down to one half, and then all the way down to zero. And then it goes negative, right? So if I'm talking about sine of seven pi over six, 7 pi over 6 is down here, y coordinate is negative a half, so negative a half, and it's kind of the same thing, right? So this was a half, this is now negative a half. This was square root of 3 over 2, now it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So negative square root of 3 over 2, and then down to negative 1, negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half, and 0. Again, essentially what I did is all these numbers, I multiply them by negative 1, I got all of these numbers down here. Um, now, now we're going to graph them, right? And you might be noticing like, wait a second, you're missing some values here. And there's a reason why we're skipping pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. The reason is because we want all of these um, spaces to be even. So this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. Um, every single jump is the same amount. If we included pi over 4 in here, we would be going up by pi over 6, then up by pi over 12, then up by pi over 12, then up by pi over 6. We want the same increment every single time so that it's easier for us. So we are ignoring a little bit of data, but hopefully you'll forgive us because it goes a little bit faster this way. So the first thing I'm noticing is 0, 0 is a point on this graph. And I didn't read the instructions before, but I can kind of read them to you now. This x-axis is no longer the x-axis. It's our angle measure theta. And our y-axis now is what is our, our sine of that function. In this case, f of theta is sine of that theta. So essentially, I'm just graphing the x and y coordinates. Uh, go to pi over 6. There's pi over 6. Go up to a height of a half. There's a height of a half. And then you make a point. And then, again, the square root of 3 over 2, I, I think it's 0.866. Um, don't, don't trust me on that one. I... I I think it's right about there. So 0.866 is a little bit more than halfway. I'm going to say it's right about there. And it goes up to a height of 1, then back down to the same height-ish, and then goes down to a half, and then goes down to 0. And now I have to do these. Okay, 7 pi over 6 lives right there. Negative a half, so go down to negative a half. And you keep doing kind of the same thing until you get all the way back down to the 2 pi. Okay, so I have all these points, and this is discrete, meaning it's just a series of points. It is supposed to be continuous, so I'm going to go ahead and connect these with a line. Um, I'm secretly rotating my iPad now to make this look nice and um, curvy the way that I would like it to be. So I'm curving through these points, curving through these points, and I'm getting a nice sinusoidal function. Oh yeah, that looks very nice. All right, um, and ta-da, yeah, it matches exactly what you see down here. So here are some of the interesting properties for the graph of uh, sine of theta. The midline, uh, notice it has the word line in it. Um, a lot of students will get confused here and say, ah, the midline is zero. I mean, you're kind of correct. It's a line, so it should be an x or y equal to a number. Um, in this case, for all of our sinusoidal functions for both sine and cosine, it's always going to be y is equal to some number out to the side. Um, by default, the, this parent function has y equals zero, aka the thing that's halfway in between, it crosses above halfway, it crosses below halfway. It is exactly the midline. <laughs> all right, the amplitude. 
Amplitude is just a fancy way of saying how much up did you go for the midline, how much down did you go for midline. Again, a common misconception with amplitude is it's how much this whole thing has traveled. This whole thing is not the amplitude, just half of it is the amplitude. So just be careful here. Amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum or the distance from the midline to the minimum. Amplitude is always considered a positive. Um, the period is, we've talked about before, how long it takes to repeat. So if I'm starting in the midline, going to the top right, the next time I'm going to the midline, also going to the top right is two pi away. This is our distance of theta. And the frequency is a new word here, but it's basically the reciprocal of the period. Um, this will come up uh, and be helpful later, but for now, I'm just gonna be like, okay, it's the just take the reciprocal of this, flip this. If you don't see anything, one, anything divided by one, make it divided by one, then flip it, then you get the frequency. So, yeah, it does oscillate between con concave up and concave down, right? So it starts out as concave down because it's, this, uh, it's a rainbow. Um, and then over here, it's a smiley face, so it's concave up. All right, let's try it for cosine now. So again, you should probably have these values memorized. Again, we skip zero, which I don't like. Um, if I skip zero, notice that um, zero has an x coordinate of one. And I'm talking about the x coordinates for all of these, right? Cosine is our x coordinate. Uh, let me not write that in pen, x coordinate. So what is the x coordinate of pi over six when on the unit circle? It's gonna be square root of three over two, which again, if you wanna know, it's about 0 0.866. Um, pi over three goes all the way up to the x coordinate of one half, then we go to zero, and then you kind of repeat, uh, but going on the left-hand side. So now it's negative one half, negative root three over two, and negative one. So there's kind of like that, that axis of symmetry right here where these are copied, these are copied, and these are copied. And then you do the same thing down here. Okay, so seven pi over six. Well, seven pi over six, the x coordinate is a negative root three over two, negative root three over two, then negative one half, uh, and then zero. And then we do the positive versions of those. those so one half, positive root three over two, and then positive one. Noise, noise. Okay, so go ahead and graph these yet again to see what the cosine function looks like. And don't look ahead at the properties of the graph for that thing. Just try it on your own. Okay, what does this look like? So zero, one, it starts at a maximum this time. So kind of important to know that a cosine starts at a maximum, but the sine started at the midline. Good to know, good to know. Okay, um, pi over six is about 0.866, so it's about right there. And then it goes down to a half and then zero, and then negative a half, and then negative 0.866, and then goes down to one, comes back up to that height, and you just continue the pattern all the way through this until we finish the pattern. Okay, so go ahead, and this is a discrete function because it's a series of points. Make this um, continuous by drawing a curvy line that goes through all of these. I'm cheating by rotating my iPad all around to make this as easy as possible to draw. If you are um, like me and you struggle to make things look nice and curvy, then I highly recommend rotating your paper around like me because it makes it look like you know how to draw curves. All right, so then let's talk about the properties of the graph for cosine. They're basically the same. Again, the midline is y equals zero. Again, make sure that the line has a y equal to a number. On um, the amplitude, how much up and down you've gone from that midline, same thing. It's one period is still two pi. The reciprocal of that is the frequency one over two pi. Okay, so... Um, it's kind of cool that you can actually transform the um, sine into a cosine or vice versa. Um, if you want a cosine, just take sine and do this thing to it. You add pi over two, which is weird to say. Whatever happens on the inside of the parentheses is actually the opposite. So normally you think, ah, plus pi over two, that means go right by pi over two. You would be wrong. It's the opposite of that because it's on the inside. This actually says go left pi over two units. So just be careful here. Um, all the signs and all the multiplication, everything is backwards when you're talking about the things that are inside right next to your input variable. Um, this also makes for some super duper tricky problems down the road. So just be ready to somehow convert between sine and cosine, knowing that sine needs to be shifted left to get to cosine or cosine needs to be shifted right to get to sine by pi over two. All right, so let's try some examples. Um, we need to find all of these things. So what do we have for the period? Well, I'm going to the top right. I'm going to the bottom right. I'm going to the top right right here, which is a distance of pi away. So therefore, the period is pi. The frequency is 1 over the period, 1 over pi, nice and easy. The midline is where we're halfway through, right? So I'm going to say the midline here is this halfway in between spot. And remember that a midline, and let me draw this correctly, the midline has to be y equal to a number. So there's going to be y is equal to, ooh, let me make this a non-dash line y is equal to this height, this y coordinate of three. 
And then the amplitude is how much up and down you move. Well, from three to six, I had to go up three, so the amplitude is three. Remember, amplitude is always a positive. If you said negative three because it went down three, you would be wrong. <laughs> it's always a positive. All right, let's try another one. Example two, period. Okay, so I'm starting and I'm at, at a maximum, going to the bottom right. Where's the next time I hit a maximum? Right there. So this is a total distance of pi over two, so pi over two. And the frequency is a reciprocal, flip it, it's two over pi. My Apple Pencil is not being my friend right now. Come on, it's gonna be two over pi. There we go. Uh, the midline, again, is kind of the halfway in between point. So let me see if I can draw my midline. It looks to be right about there. It is indeed right there. Um, that is this y coordinate of one. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Y coordinate of one. Um, therefore, I say y coordinate of one. And the amplitude, how much up and down have I gone from that midline? I've gone up to, uh, two or I've gone uh, down two. Either way, the answer is two. Example three doesn't have a graph, and these are typically more um, of the type of problems that you have on the AP test because you have to imagine on your own. All, all of these graphs so far have been scaffolding of making sure you know what's really going on. Let's see if you can imagine what's going on in this one, right? So I know I have a maximum at pi over eight, and I have a um, another maximum at three pi um, negative two. So what's going on here? Let me go ahead and draw a quick sketch of what I have. So I have... Some Okay, by the way, whenever I draw my lines, this is always the midline. It's not the theta or the x um, axis. Um, so let's go ahead and assume that's the, the midline. I'm going to go, um, this is pi right here, and I'm going to come up to the maximum of uh, this height right here is 8. And I'm going to go and get another maximum. So another maximum at 3 pi and negative 2. Um, First, oh, first min, I was like, negative two is not the maximum. The eight is the maximum. That's because I misread this. This is minimum. The minimum happens at negative two. So I'm going to come over here and just randomly mark a point. I'm saying that's three pi. And I go all the way down here to this minimum, and I'm going to call that negative two. So what is the period? And this is kind of tricky, right? Because I have a maximum, and then I come down here to a minimum. And then what I should theoretically have is I have to come back up here to complete the period. This is one full period between these two marks. This is um, up to three pi. I've only gone half of a period. So um, very commonly on the AP test, you'll see either them give you a half of a period or sometimes even a quarter of a period. An example of a quarter of a period would be like a, a maximum to a midline. The first time that you hit the midline after the maximum or something like that, right? Um, if you do have a quarter of a period to turn it into a full period, you multiply by four. Because we are given a half of a period, we are going to multiply this by two to get to our full period. So first, what is the distance between pi and three pi? Yeah, it's very good. You subtract them, right? 3 pi minus pi is 2 pi. So this entire distance right here and here is 2 pi. And then I'm given half of the period. So to get the next half of the period, I need to have another 2 pi for a total period of 4 pi. So the period here is 4 pi. I want to write that in red, though. 4 pi. And the frequency, you just take the reciprocal. It's 1 over 4 pi. Nice and easy. The midline, though, is a little bit tricky. The fastest way that I like to find the midline is just to take the average of these two numbers, meaning you add them together and divide by 2. So I'm going to take 8. I'm going to add the negative 2, divide by 2. Last I checked, 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, the midline is not 3. It's y equals 3. Don't forget your y equal 2. It is a y equal 2 to be a line. All right, and finally, the amplitude. How much from 3 do I have to move in order to get to 8? Well, I go up 5. How much from 3 do I have to move to get from negative 2? I go down 5. But the amplitude is always a positive, therefore it's just 5. All right, let's try a free response question type thing. Um, let's analyze. The first thing that I'm noticing is says the center of the clock is 120 inches above, which means that this distance, let me go ahead and draw this like line out from the center of the clock, which is holy moly, that, how is that the center of the clock? Come on, there we go. So this distance from here to here is 120. Let's go ahead and assume all the units are inches so I don't have to do like marks like that. Okay, um, that time is equal to zero, we're pointed straight up, and that means um, what is going on? Okay, still moving twice as fast. So that means the next time that we're pointing at 12 is exactly 30 minutes later. Um, hmm, that sounds like a period to me. I'm going to go ahead and annotate the period is equal to 30 minutes. Um, does it tell me how long the uh, minute hand is? I must have read over that. Oh, it says 8 inches long. Okay, so that means that the distance between here and here is eight. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate that, that this distance is eight. And therefore, this distance down here is also eight. If I were to draw a line um, here, <laughs> not the best line, but whatever. Um, both of those distances are eight because it's a circle. The radius is the same everywhere.
So kind of cool to know. Um, this middle, aka midline, is 120. So let me come over here and label the midline right here as 100 and, oh, and not a dash line though, as 120. And then from there, I like to go um, up eight and down eight. So 120 plus eight is 128 for the maximum. If I go down eight from 120, I get 112. Okay, so now I have the minimum and maximum and midline. We're in good shape. Um, all right, so what's going on at time is equal to zero? At time is equal to zero, it's pointed straight up. So up is F, we got lucky there. Sometimes you have to like expand this thing. Up is F and therefore this time right here is zero. And then it completes one uh, revolution every 30 minutes. I already set it up here that the period is 30. Therefore, this entire distance between F and P is 30, 30 right here. And then I just have to divide this in half a bunch of times. Okay, so halfway between zero and 30 is 15 and halfway between 15 and zero is 7.5. I'm choosing decimals this time. I could have done 15 halves, that's okay. Whatever floats your boat or sinks your sub on those types of problems. So each of these distances is 7.5, add another 7.5, add another 7.5, and that's going to be 22.5 right here. 22.5. And I have all the T and H values for all these points. If I'm feeling um, like I want to draw these, I can. I can say that this is 0, 128. G is going to be 7.5, 120. J is going to be 15, 112. K is going to be 22.5, 120. P is going to be 30, 128. So far, so good. I got all of my points. Um, part B, find the period, frequency, and amplitude, and midline. Find all four of those things. Okay, well, the period is pretty easy. Let me go ahead and label these things correctly. I can say period um, is equal to 30, technically minutes. Um, next is the frequency. Frequency. Well, the frequency is one divided by that. It's the reciprocal. It's one over 30. Technically minutes. Again, I don't know if it cares about units. Um, the amplitude. Amplitude. Um, how much up and down do we move? Well, we moved a total distance of eight from the midline. And what were the units of up eight? We said it was in inches. Did we not? We did say inches. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here and say this is in inches. And then finally, the midline. The midline would be y is equal to a number. In that case, it's gonna be 120. And I don't think you need units if it's an equation already. I don't even think I needed units for any of those. I was probably going above and beyond for that one. And finally, part C, this is the, the new bit here. So find two intervals for which the graph of H is both decreasing and concave up. Okay, so decreasing and concave up. Concave up means it's a smiley face. So there's a smiley face. We need to be decreasing on that smiley face. So I'm decreasing just here and here. Well, that's, oh, that's only one, which means we need to continue this out over and over and over again until we get the next one. So, um, oh, right, right there. That piece and that piece look, wait, no, that piece, there we go. That piece and that piece look exactly the same. So where does that happen? Well, I know that that piece right here happens at another 7.5, so 37.5. And the distance between a full half of a period, remember 15 to 30 was 15. So from 30 to this point is also another 15, which is 45. Okay, so the period that I'm looking for, let me go ahead and maybe highlight that. That might be better. So right there and right there. Those are the things I'm looking for. So between 7.5 and 15, so you can come over here and say between... 7.5 and 15. So that's the first interval. And the next interval is between 37.5 and 45. Done and done. I think that ends the notes. Yeah, then we move on to the worksheet. That concludes the notes for topic 3.4 to 3.5 for APE Precalculus. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you guys later.